Hello everybody, uh, it's been a really long time, but it's Gavin here, I'm back. Uh, I just want to do a few more, start doing a few more videos. Um, actually ended up getting a Cintiq Hybrid, Companion Cintiq Hybrid. And uh, i got to say I really love it, I've had it for a few months now. Um, I was a little skeptical uh, of getting it, to some degree, I just didn't want to buy it. And then uh, Wacom, you know announce a brand new version uh, with you know better specs and everything like that but uh, I got it I think in November and uh, I've been using it for a few months now and it's been awesome I use it with my laptop as a Cintiq and uh, you know I as much as I can I use it on its own uh, just in Android mode uh, because I, I do like some of the art apps so much um, I did a video a little while ago um, saying that Clover Paint is the best uh, art app on Android and uh, a few more have come out since then um, a few challengers have come out um, and some existing ones have uh, gotten better so Autodesk Sketchbook Pro has gotten a lot better um, Lair Paint HD is really nice uh, Infin Infinite Painter has gotten a lot better and then uh, Corel Painter uh, released a, a new version uh, as well as uh, some different ones from uh, Wacom and uh, and obviously there's Artflow also. So I want to quickly go through each of them um, just to kind of highlight what I think uh, works well um, and what the best uses are for each app and uh, you know the strengths and weaknesses of each. So I will, I'll go with Clover Paint last. Um, we'll start with, um, start with Coral Painter. It's kind of neat. So uh, this is not by me. I'll just say that right out, right out of the bat. That's a uh, Sean Galloway. I was just using it as a reference image. Um, let's see. But anyways, um, nice presentation. You can see uh, that you have your, you know, you have your. It's it's a lot like what you would expect from Painter. So you can rotate. Um, I do believe they have one finger panning, which is really nice. Um, as you can see here, one finger panning, um, pinch zoom, really nice and responsive. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, in this app, you don't have uh, quite as many uh, options in terms of uh, tools that you can use. And uh, I think there's a limit on the size of your uh, canvas. So let's see. Let's create a new one. Let me see how big I can make this. And you can't really see that there, sorry. If you can see it. Oh well. 720 by 480 pixels. Let me change that. Let's see. Yeah, it caps me out at 2048. Uh, I tried to punch in 7,000 just now, and it didn't work. Yeah, so my max size is 2048 by 2048. Uh, so I'll go ahead and create that, uh, discard that. So it's pretty cool. Brush functionality is very nice, uh, responsive. Um, I do love the the navigation one finger panning. Um, if you've watched my other videos, you know I'm a, a big proponent of that. Um, and I do believe, yeah. Uh, they've updated it so that I can program the, the Cintiq pen. Um, I can put my eyedropper on one of the buttons. So I've put it on my second button here, um, which is kind of nice. There's no visual representation of me doing it. It's just kind of like wherever I click over my canvas, it's just going to give me that color. I click here to bring up my uh, color uh, swatches. And then, um, <clears throat> as you can see, I have a whole bunch of different... Uh, pencil types and sprayers and paint brushes etc and they all feel really nice um, I can use my volume keys to change my size here and one thing you will notice about this and I'm experiencing it now is there there tend to be a lot of bugs in uh, in this program which is kind of unfortunate uh, so see I'm getting some weird stuff happening here this is not ideal um, to see when you're when you're demonstrating a product um, that being said I will say I really do enjoy this uh, 
this app. I like it. Um, I, I don't like some of the limitations and and uh, and some of the lack lack of tools. Um, but uh, if you enjoy working with traditional media, it uh, is a great uh, great program to use. Let me just start a brand new one here. And it, maybe the scale is giving me some problems, so I'll just go back down to a smaller size. Uh, let's go 720 by. Uh, 480, which was the default. Discard that, and uh, yeah, I'm still getting kinds of some kinds of bugs and stuff like that, which is unfortunate. Um, that being said, don't let this uh, turn you off. This is a really neat app. Um, I do enjoy it, um, <clears throat> so it's up there. It's a, uh, it's probably one of the top four or five uh, Android art apps, I believe. Um, especially depending on what you're looking for. If you want a more traditional media workflow, um, you know, this app is right up there. If you're familiar with oil paints and and um, uh, different things like that, watercolors, um, then this is really good. It's got a nice, uh, actually, really beautiful um, way of mimicking uh, watercolor. You can see it even kind of... Uh, keeps moving until my brush stops. You can see it kind of like dripping down the page. It's soaking into the page, which is really neat. So I would recommend uh, checking this out. Um, you can turn on textures uh, on the back. You can change the depth, the opacity, you make it darker, stronger. Um, you can change the color of the texture, which is neat. Um, kind of a neat little non-destructive way of uh, editing the background of your image. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely check out uh, this app. I think it's very promising. Um, presentation is nice. Performance is fairly good. Uh, it, it does have quite a few bugs, unfortunately, but, uh, but yeah, it's a pretty good one. <clears throat> okay, so let's get out of here. Uh, let me close some of these. Okay, so next we have Infinite Painter. Infinite Painter, uh, I would say, is probably the number one app in terms of pure tools and uh, functionality. It's really uh, impressive in terms of that. The presentation is also very nice, um, but in terms of the just the sheer amount of uh, tools, actually, we can actually see. Let me see how big I can make this. Let me see if I can make it 4,000. This is capping out at 2048, but probably 2048 also. So I'll just go ahead and create that. Um, one thing I found with uh, this program is that uh, the feel is just not quite there yet. Um, and you'll see this may be a beta, so so don't um, uh, don't judge it too harshly. I do believe this uh, this one might still be in beta, but I do get some kind of funny uh, chugging happening at times on my brush strokes. So it doesn't doesn't have that nice, really nice uh, responsive feel uh, to the drawing. Um, and again, this has uh, actually quite a few similarities to um, uh, to Painter, which we just tried out. Um, Oops, where's my layers? So I can got my layers, and I can change the paper settings here, as you see. Um, so I can turn it on. So very similar. I wouldn't even be surprised if uh, if they're somehow related um, or different. Uh, different. You know, sometimes you have different branding of a, of a similar app. Um, so I don't know how involved uh, the developers are with each other, but. Uh, there are some similarities uh, there, especially here in terms of uh, the paper <clears throat> settings and everything like that. But uh, where this app really shines is in terms of the um, the amount of tools that you have. And, and a lot of these you have to actually purchase separately. Um, so these are in-app purchases, but you have your symmetry tools, um, you have your ruler tools, you have your perspective tools. Um, and they're all really cool. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the symmetry stuff. So this is something you, you'll 
be used to if you if you use a sketchbook pro a lot I do believe Painter might have uh, some symmetry also, but you'll have to go in and uh, check it yourself. But yeah, that's always kind of a nice uh, feature to have. Symmetry. I don't use it all that much, but it's great if you're trying to like you know design uh, something. If you want to save time, not have to redraw both sides uh, more than once. Add that. Okay, so in terms of brush selection, uh, has quite a lot of brushes, and I kind of had to go through here and find stuff that was uh, more useful uh, to me. Um, you can kind of tweak and create your own, uh, but I found that. Um, in terms of brushes, I would say Painter is probably uh, a little bit better in terms of uh, natural media brushes. And I, I do believe this app uh, attempts to uh, mimic natural media brushes, um, but I, I found that uh, Painter is probably a little bit more successful uh, with that at this stage of the game. Um, but uh, let's create a new layer. Hide this. Take a look at some of the uh, the neat features that it has. Um, so this one I, I really thought was neat. Um, this uh, interactive tool, the protractor, um, which I can use as a ruler. And unfortunately, I'm not showing these. Oh, let me turn off my symmetry settings. So up, as you'll see up here, I, all, all the tools that I have on are. are or I can turn them on and off. I could just click that one. That was my symmetry, so I just turn that off. And we'll go back to my uh, pencil brush. <clears throat> so I'll go to graphite, and then uh, so you can see I can create a circle wherever I want. I can scale this thing up, and I can move it to create a line. I should be able to create a line. There we go. So this is um, pretty neat, pretty, pretty nice in terms of uh, user interface and everything like that. Um, so I really enjoy the tool set uh, that this app offers. I think there is a lasso cut tools, uh, maybe not. Oh, scissors, yeah, here we go. Um, so I will cut. So that brings me a nice little area where I can, you know, two fingers pinch and uh, and move this uh, this cutout, which is kind of neat. Nice little interface. And then I have different options down here um, to flip, flip horizontally or vertically, rotate it, uh, etc. And then when I'm ready, I can just click there to apply. So that's kind of nice. Um, I do enjoy that. Um, but uh, as of right now, I think this is the app that has a ton of promise. Um, I would love to see a little bit more work done in terms of just brush performance and, um, and actual painting performance. But in terms of tool set, I don't think any app um, out there kind of matches this at this point. So, and I didn't even go into like all the perspective tools and everything like that. Like this even has curvilinear perspective. I, I can't speak to how accurate it is, but uh, but it's really cool. It seems pretty accurate, but um, like that alone is a really neat feature that I can kind of get these fisheye kind of like wet lens type perspective guides going. And, and the, you can't really see it on my screen here because uh, it's very faint, but um, the UI is this is well really well thought out. Um, and really well done. So that that for me is very impressive. Um, and I think that ultimately, uh, the more I spend time working solely on Android um, uh, for my art purposes, it's likely that I will bounce around from one app to another um, to utilize, you know, uh, different tools. Or, or you know, if one app is better for 
drawing, the initial drawing, then I'll probably create my sketch in that app and then take it over to another one if I feel that that, that other app is better for painting. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, this is Infinite Painter. Um, I, I encourage you to, to try it out. You can download it for free. Um, that being said, if you want to try out the various tools, you'll have to um, uh, purchase a bunch of them. They're in-app upgrades, but uh, reasonably priced and I think worth it. So, so yeah, so that's another really good one. Uh, discard that. Again, nice presentation. Um, let's just back out of here. The next one is Layer Paint HD. This one's been around for a long time. This one, well, Layer Paint has been around for a long time, but uh, the HD version is, uh, I would say, I suppose, uh, a little bit newer um, than the uh, than the original. But um, but this app has has a ton going for it. This this one, I think, actually, as much as I love Clover Paint, I would say this one has the most, probably the most potential. Um, in a lot of ways, um, mainly in terms of performance, the performance in this app is is just nothing short of a of a, a little bit. It's pretty mind blowing, actually, that uh, the type of performance I can get um, on my Android tablet. There are some glaring limitations for me um, in terms of usability. As you can see, there's no one finger panning. Um, I did email the developer to see if that is something that could uh, be implemented. Uh, I didn't get any response. The developer is in Japan. I don't know. I don't know if English is a uh, is a, a language that he, he knows very well or not. But um, if anyone can get in contact with the developer, I would love it if you could tell him. You know, if you could implement rotation. There's no rotation, as you can see. No no pinch rotation. And there's no one finger panning. Um, if you could implement those two things, I think that alone would make a huge difference um, and that being said the the eyedropper needs a lot of work too so as it is right now if I want to pick up a color I have to go all the way over here um, to my eyedropper little icon drag it out you know to wherever I want to be and then pick up my color that way and then by the same token if I want to change the size of my brush I have to drag over here um, and then do it that way. That being said, look at how big I can make the, the my brush size, uh, 500 pixels, and that's that's huge. Um, like that's really big, and I don't lose anything in terms of performance. Obviously, the uh, the Cintiq Hybrid is going to be a little bit more powerful than most uh, phones. Um, maybe the Note 4 is a, is a, is probably right up there in terms of performance, and some other Tegra. Um, devices I think uh, but uh, that being said I think the Cintiq hybrid doesn't have quite as much bloatware on it so I'm getting a little more closer to the the pure performance uh, that, that I would expect based on this specifications um, but uh, if we look at this here so I got my pen tool um, I'll go to my pencil tool um, and so th this is kind of like more of that Photoshop style brush that I like to paint with um, where I have uh, transparency uh, based on pressure the amount of pressure I use. Um, it's nice here that I have the color dialog always open so it's easy for me to choose new colors. Um, that being said one of the biggest parts of my workflow is to pick up colors off the canvas so if I can't do that with a hotkey um, or a button on my on my stylus I'm kind of like uh, it slows me down so I'll be painting painting you know, and if I'm getting a nice transition color, if I like that little transition color that I've gotten based on, you know, not pressing too too hard with my brush, and I want to start painting a little bit more with a more opacity with that color over here, um, I have to go all the way here, grab my color picker, drag it all the way up, get it to where I want, got it, and then continue painting. So, so for me, that's, um, again, a lot just because of the way I like to work. I like to work relatively quick, quickly, especially when I'm painting. Um, so for me, this is a an added step that I'd like to eliminate. You know, because if I have to do this a hundred times, um, it's going to cost me a lot of time.
but you see the uh, in terms of actual brush performance and the blending and everything it's it's all right there the performance is there uh, again the tool set is not super uh, super huge um, but uh, and the brush the amount of brushes is not that uh, great but the performance is, is is the best I would say the performance in this app is the best I don't have the same limitations in terms of canvas size that I have in, in the others let's just quickly double check that if I create so if you see already the the size of this canvas is bigger than I was even able to do in uh, painter or infinite painter um, so let's make a new one let's see how big I can go let's see if it'll give me like uh, 7,000 and it does so you'll see that uh, performance wise this app is uh, is right there I think uh, it's better it's even better than clover paint um, I wish clover paint had this kind of performance uh, Clover Paint limits my brush size to I think 100 something pixels, 150 pixels um, compared to 500 pixels in this app. So you can see if I want to fill in a big area uh, really quickly if I'm painting something um, in this app I can do that much much easier. Um, that being said, as much potential as this ha app has, I still would choose Clover Paint um, over this, especially for painting. Uh, just because the workflow is uh, is that much uh, better, and it may be a case, like I said, if you're bouncing around between apps to use each for its particular strength, I may start something in here, and then take it into Clover Paint later on to finish it off. And another thing, important thing to say with this app is that um, it's very good for uh, painting, and sorry, excuse me, it's also good for drawing. So it's got a really good. Uh, pen tool and you'll see when I'm zooming in and out everything goes a little bit pixelated which it does that um, it's an option that I have in my settings um, and it's obviously to assist in terms of performance so it, it downgrades the image um, as I pinch and, and pinch zoom and everything like that to just keep the process uh, uh, moving along a bit faster which I'm totally cool with I have no issue with that at all but you'll see I get a nice, sharp, clean, responsive uh, uh, drawing tool. So if I want to do just pure line work, um, it's great for that. Okay. Um, and I will mention, um, I would say that uh, Painter, I would you could do some good line work in that. Um, but I found that for myself with um, Infinite Painter at this point, um, that it's a little bit, uh, it's really a little bit hard to get a nice, clean, crisp, uh, sharp looking pen or pencil tool. Everything's got a bit of a fuzzy edge to it. Um, okay, so let's, let's take a look at Artflow. Oh, I'm sorry. We got Artflow still and we got Autodesk and then we'll take a look at Clover Paint. Um, so Artflow. Artflow is a good one. Um, a lot to like about Artflow. The, the UI is really nice, very nice and polished. Um, some of the same problems that I have with uh, uh, Layer Paint HD um, pop up in this app. So this probably has a bit more uh, selection in terms of uh, in terms of brushes. Um, is this a symmetry line? Yeah. So this has does have symmetry, and it's kind of cool. It's an interactive symmetry line. So I can move it, and rotate it. Um, so that's a neat feature. Um, like I said, the, the the visual UI, the presentation on this app is is great. Um, uh, I have all my brushes here. So again, this is another free app where when you purchase it, you'll unlock all the extra brushes, um, and I believe some extra tools. Again, I don't use this one all that much. Um, because then, and you'll notice this is a common theme for me, and it may not be an issue for you. So, so buyer beware. Um, I, I will definitely recommend apps like Clover Paint. But you know, if the the presentation of the UI is is kind of the thing that, that works for you, and you have no problem going back and you know to click on hidden menus to to get your uh, color picker and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you're cool with all that, then then this may be the app for you. Um, 
as you can see I can right click or I can click my uh, my cursor button in this app to pick up colors off my canvas um, so that's a nice touch um, so that again helps me paint a little bit quicker but in terms of blending I, I would have to go in and, and see what uh, my blending brushes are and stuff and like I said I'll, I'll admit that this is not an app that I use all that much although I do find that the results um, that I get from using this app are, are pretty nice I, I can't say anything poorly about uh, you know the brush performance or you know look at the nice crisp clean line I was able to get here um, so I definitely have uh, you know tools that I can draw with and I also have tools that I can paint with um, and let's see it looks like I have a, a protracted tool so some of the tools I was getting in uh, Infinite Painter, I also get in here. And like I said, the UI in this is, is very nice. I can't uh, rotate, two finger rotate. Um, I can't do one finger panning. Um, again, these are not the biggest things for most people, but for myself, uh, it's probably one of the biggest reasons why I don't use this app as much um, as some others. Um, it also bugs me that I have to go in here uh, to change my brush size because uh, I like to uh, be able to quickly change my brush size. Um, uh, but uh, I cannot do that with this app. Um, and again, if I can, if, if the settings allow for that and I just haven't enabled them, you know, by all means, leave a comment. I don't want to lead anybody astray. Uh, I just kind of want to give you a bit of an, of an overview of uh, what's available uh, on the Android market and what uh, the Cintiq Hybrid is capable of. Okay, so let's go back here. Um, this is where I choose my tool. So I have my ruler here. And the UI is really nice. i got to say, like, the, the presentation is, is, is very nice. It's just the workflow. The workflow for me is not uh, is not ideal. Because uh, I'm so used to working on a Cintiq where I have uh, you know my keyboard here and I'm using Photoshop or, or TV Paint or Clip Studio and I can quickly press the alt key um, or whatever key I have for you know eyedropper so I can pick up colors off my canvas, keep painting and I can have my fingers on the increase brush and decrease bar brush size buttons um, so you know if I need to create a small detail here I can quickly do that I can you know make my brush really small without having to move my hand somewhere else to get you know the proper uh, the proper tool so so yeah that's a huge uh, workflow uh, benefit and I'm, as I'm looking here I get a pretty good size brush uh, two, 250 pixels here and the performance is not really uh, taking a nosedive um, so that's actually actually really good also. So I know a lot of people are big fans of Artflow, and I, I just want to say that it is a really good app. Uh, it does not, for me, provide the um, workflow speed that I can get from something like Clover Paint. Okay, so let's back out of here. And like I said, I, I like to try them all, but you're pretty much good to go like with just about any of these apps like you're you could probably get you know most of what you want to do done um, so this is uh, the new sketchbook pro app and I must say this uh, I wasn't a huge fan of the the older version but they released this new version which is again it's free to download and it has in-app upgrades but uh, this one is a uh, I was really impressed and for me I think at this point this one is my number two um, art app on Android so I have my have my pinch rotation um, I do not have one finger panning as you can see I've tried to contact the developers about that but uh, it's a little bit harder to get in touch with them um, but again it's not a major deal breaker uh, I, I miss it I definitely miss it um, but at least I can rotate and it has a nice little snap back to 90 
uh, degrees or zero degrees. Let's see if it snaps to 90 also. No. But it does snap back to our, uh, our original orientation. Um, so this clips to, or, uh, this is a sketchbook and some of the tools are really nice. So I was really impressed with the way they've got this little uh, uh, floating uh, um, icon here uh, where I can just drag to increase or decrease my brush size. Um, so this is almost the next best thing to having a nice uh, hotkey that I can just press. And I can also, oh no, that doesn't work, sorry. That's changing my volume. So the volume up and down keys on the Cintiq Hybrid and a lot of apps will uh, increase or decrease the brush size. So Infinite Painter allows that and Painter allows that. Um, uh, this one might, I just might not have it set, it set to that. Um, and over here, if I drag up and down, I can change my brightness which is really cool brightness uh, all the way to white down to black down to and in the middle whatever my uh, uh, color is um, left and right will give me less saturation right will go to uh, full blast saturation um, so that's actually a really nice uh, little feature and again it helps with, uh, with painting if I want to go a little bit more saturated uh, a little darker a little less saturated I can quickly and easily uh, you know, make those adjustments. Um, color picking on the on the pen is not available. In this, I do believe I can uh, use my finger. Um, yeah, so I can use my finger. Uh, just put it down. Whoops, sorry, like that, and um, drag it to where I want to to pick up a color. Um, so this is relatively convenient. Not quite as convenient, obviously, as just being able to tap a button on my stylus but um, but it, it gets the job done so uh, I, I normally find that painter is or uh, sorry this is um, sketchbook pro normally I find that sketchbook pro is better for drawing not so good at uh, painting but uh, this some of the, these uh, you know improvements have uh, have made the painting aspect of it much better so I, I find that a lot of times the people who swear by sketchbook um, at least previous versions, they're more so uh, drawers. Like they like to do line work, line art, and, you know, create their character, draw the face, put the eyes in, or whatever. You can make a brush smaller. Okay, so I find this actually this app is really nice for. Uh, for drawings, the performance is really nice and uh, responsive. Um, there's a bit of a fuzziness around all my lines. I don't know why that is. I think it's some kind of anti-aliasing or something like that. Um, and uh, so I, I find that I can't get a super clean, clean, uh, uh, detailed, uh, sharp line. But uh, it doesn't bother me that much for some reason, to be honest. Uh, in this app, it may bother me if I wanted to do some like uh, more detailed stuff for printing or something like that, um, but uh, it doesn't really bother bother me that much. Um, let's see the size, canvas size. Uh, let me create a new sketch. So this one caps me out in terms of uh, layers and uh, resolution. So as you can see, I can get a a canvas that's uh, 2030 by sorry 2830 by 2830 um, but I, I'm limited to three layers whereas if I go 1280 by 720 I can get 18 layers um, so layer paint HD doesn't give me the same limitations um, I'm not sure about art flow uh, I know clip studio doesn't give me any limitations like that um, so that could be a potential deal breaker for you depending on what size uh, canvas you want to work on or if you need a ton of layers to do the, the things that you want to do. Um, so obviously we have custom settings here. Um, and it will, it will tell you if you go this big, then you're going to be constrained to this many layers. Uh, so it's kind of nice that it, it gives you that uh, info. Um, one cool thing with this, the presentation again is really nice. So right now I'm inside of a, uh, uh, a drawing, an image. But if I zoom out, enough then it, it brings me up to like a, a little um, 
interface where it's kind of like a different I can have different folders up top here I'll get a nice glare on my screen here sorry about that um, but uh, yeah so I can have like a kind of see like different um, images that you have that you've done and uh, you can just kind of zoom back out and then just scroll through them which is kind of neat uh, in terms of uh, interface like just the polish and, and everything and this one is really nice um, so let's back out of here and let's take a quick look at a couple of other the tools here. Um, so I do have some ruler tools. I do have my symmetry, uh, as we looked at in other apps. Um, I do have guides um, similar to Artflow. So I do find that there's a, a bit of similarity um, in terms of some of the um, some of these UI tools uh, from one app to another. And I guess you know, I would imagine maybe a lot of them are are looking at what Sketchbook is doing and if they have something that's neat they're kind of copying it um, maybe putting their little twist on it um, which is great it helps to give uh, the the art environment a little bit more consistency from app to app uh, which is not not a bad thing by any means um, so I think I get to my I can get some shapes here if I want it's kind of neat um, what else do I have? Um, I have my selection tools, which I really like. And then I can... Uh, oh, how is it? When I select it... Oh. When I select it like so, then I can... How does this work? Oh, so yeah, I can, uh, similar to uh, Infinite Painter, um, I can just grab it, rotate it, but the, the interface is slightly different. I have all my uh, tools and options up here, but really nice, very uh, uh, workflow-wise, it's very um, friendly, uh, very intuitive, easy to do, one finger move. Uh, two finger pinch, zoom, rotate, etc. Confirm it like so. So that's really nice. Uh, I do like that. That's probably uh, one of the things I would love to see in Clover Paint um, the most. I can import an image uh, for reference, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's see what I got. So. I can just kind of put that somewhere. It just brings it on a new layer. Um, there was there was a point, and I don't know if it was this app or another app, but I, I use so many I sometimes get confused between the different ones. Um, but there was, there was one or two that allowed you to bring in a reference image, and you could actually scale... Um, and move that reference image uh, independently of the rest of your uh, document, which was kind of a, excuse me, kind of a neat feature. Um, uh, but uh, it may not have been this one, if I remember correctly. It was Infinite Painter, but I um, that feature may have been uh, removed. So because I haven't seen it in a little while, uh, let's back out of here. Let's uh, check out Clover Paint. So, so when I when I use Clover Paint, you'll see, and there's a bunch of updates here. Um, so when I use Clover Paint, I use it with a lot of the um, the the hotkeys. So you'll you'll notice that um, the way I use Clover Paint, I use it in a way that that I, I literally cannot use the other apps. So it did take a little bit of customization um, on my part, 
uh, and I did need the uh, to purchase the uh, the EFT add-on, which is the extension for tablets, which was about twenty twenty-five dollars uh, extra, and was well worth it. Um, because of that, I get this uh, the uh, color picker uh, menu here. I get uh, my floating layers menu, which I can place where I want it to be, um, as well as many others. Um, the, one of the new additions is this little dialog where I can drag and drop uh, different brushes, uh, which is kind of neat. So I can have a little uh, dialog box of brushes. All right, so back to uh, sorry, back to this. I had a small interruption there. Um, yeah, so for me, I, I, I definitely purchased the extension for tablets. It allows me to um, really, really uh, in, improve and enhance my workflow that much more. So as you can see, um, this this app offers me all of the um, uh, interface options that uh, that I require to, to get a really fast workflow. Um, and some of them were were provided by the de developer. I found that the developer for this app is really open to suggestions, so I, I emailed him a couple ideas, and uh, he implemented them. Um, but prior to that, he had already uh, done a ton of work on allowing lots of customization for this app. So um, the one-finger panning was a suggestion I made, um, which he implemented. I really like it. Um, Rotation, two finger pinch rotation, um, and zoom, which is really nice. Um, so the brushing in this feels the most like Photoshop for me. Um, I can hold down my cursor button here, and it's going to show me, you know, which uh, which uh, paint color I'm going to pick up. I can customize my brushes in this more than I can in uh, any of the, any of the other apps. I can use my own custom alphas for brushes if I want to. Um, uh, it also supports the tilt functionality on the Cintiq Hybrid. So you'll see if I go um, up high like this, I get a, uh, a very thin line. But as soon as I start tilting to the side, I get more of a... Um, thicker line. Um, so I've set it up kind of to act a little bit more like a pencil. So when you pull the pencil on the side, um, you can get that kind of like nice broad stroke. Um, and when you hold it up top, it goes uh, a lot thinner. And probably something I could also do, I could make it go darker um, when I hold it up top like that, like you would get with a pencil. That being said, I haven't done that with this, but I, I could customize it that way if I wanted to. Um, I've got a lot of really neat uh, hotkeys over here. Um, so on the on the Cintiq Hybrid, and you can't see the buttons here, but uh, I've got a button that I've programmed to clear my canvas, um, which is really useful. Um, my volume buttons, if I hold down my volume, button, volume up button, I can, uh, you see I can scale. All right, sorry about that. I think I was just mentioning the uh, the clear canvas button and the uh, resize brush button. So let's take a look at some of my tools here. So this is a bigger brush that I would use for painting. Again, I have my my colors palette right here, so I can quickly get the colors that I need. Okay. Similar to Layer Paint HD, um, but with this I can also just uh, color select right off my canvas. So if you're wondering how's it getting that new color, uh, I'm just going to the place. You know, I'm just basically mixing right off my uh, my canvas, which is a huge huge workflow uh, improvement. And then when I need a smaller brush, I can scale it down. So you'll see how, after comparing it to some of the other apps, the, uh, the there's really no comparison actually in terms of uh, workflow. Um, 
and also just like the feel I, I can't really describe it but it just feels nice the, the painting um, with some of the brushes that I've set up here in uh, Clover Paint uh, it just feels really nice relatively responsive um, I would love to see even more responsiveness and bigger brushes uh, but uh, but I think that what I have here is, is definitely sufficient you know um, I can make as many layers as I want um, it's uh, it's just great um, the the downfall I guess uh, there are and there are a few um, of clover paint again the brush size the cap at uh, 150 pixels is a, is a bit of a nuisance I would like to see that go a little bit bigger Um, the complexity of the UI is, is, is not as easy to jump in and do stuff as, as, as some of the others. Uh, and as, as streamlined as a lot of this stuff is, once I've set it up, uh, there are some things that, uh, are still a bit of a nuisance. So say, for example, I want to select an area. It takes me to another screen. I select my area. And then I have to confirm my selection. Um... And here, where is it? Oh, I have to click return, then I have a selection. So it's, it's kind of like stuff like that is not uh, uh, quite as streamlined as I would like it to be. Uh, I don't see why I should have to go to a separate screen to make my selection. Um, you know, it would be nice if I could just make the selection where I am. Um, and then if I want to move that selection, um, it's not, so it doesn't respect, uh, the selection that I've made. Um, when I go to the move, I, I would have to actually copy and paste, um, that thing that I wanted to move, um, for it to work, which is, so as you can see, like just from looking at, sorry, just as you can see what I'm doing here, it's starting to get a lot more, um, convoluted. Um, so I have to get my rotation, apply it, and then return. So it's it's just not um, it's not ideal. Um, <clears throat> so other than that, I think uh, this this app is really nice. Uh, I have nice drawing tools. Let's see, I find a good drawing tool. Um, clear my selection so there's a really nice uh, drawing brush so I can get a nice really thin uh, sharp responsive line very well, very responsive um, nice clean and sharp line uh, for drawing I can easily choose my color I can color pick off my canvas I can zoom in as as, as much as I want I can even hold down the right, the I say right mouse button, but the uh, the second, uh, the first uh, button on my stylus, and I'll go into eraser mode, so I can just erase out whatever I have there. So it's just in terms of workflow speed and um, feel and everything, it's 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 easily the best I, I find. Uh, there are, like I said, some contenders kind of coming coming. You know, coming up, but uh, uh, Clover Paint is just uh, at this point, uh, I think the best. I, I think uh, once you start really using it um, in the way it's capable of and customizing it to your particular needs, um, there's really no comparison. Um, that being said, out of the box, it is uh, a little bit confusing to figure it out. You do have to invest a little bit of time in terms of. Uh, a figuring out the UI and B um, making it work, you know, for yourself. So, so yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the state of the the art scene on Android at this point. Uh, there is one more app which I didn't uh, mention here, which is uh, uh, what's it called? Um, art Rage. Art Rage is also out for Android, but to my to the best of my knowledge, it's only available on uh, Samsung devices. So I have been looking for it in the, in the app store 
um, for a long time. I'm sure I could download the APK and uh, copy it over, but I'm really not into bootlegging, so uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's possible to get it on this, this device, but I can't purchase it through the uh, uh, the regular Play Store. So I'll, I'll go back in and check and see if it's available. Um, but I've been checking uh, for quite some time and I haven't found it available as of yet. Um, but I have tried it on my uh, Note 3 device and it's pretty nice. Um, but I'd still say, uh, for me at this point, it's not quite uh, it's not quite on the level of uh, of Clover Paint as of yet. So uh, Clover Paint, I would love to see it get more. Um, you know some of the more more of the bells and whistles that uh, that uh, say Infinite Painter and uh, and um, uh, what's the other one uh, Sketchbook Pro have, but uh, in terms of raw like workflow um, optimization, I think this one offers the best uh, the best out of them all um, in terms of like a pretty UI and and presentation and everything like that. Uh, I would say. Clover Paint is probably the last, <laughs> unfortunately. So as you can see with the UI that I have here, um, I've hidden most of things, most of the things. Um, but uh, the default, the UI is much different than this, and uh, and you do have to fiddle fiddle around with it, you know, to get it to to the point where it works for you. Um, but I do encourage you to stick with it. Um, and if if for whatever reason Clover Paint is not for you, um, obviously there are many other good uh, alternatives. Uh, which I've showcased here. If anyone knows any other really good apps, um, art apps, I would definitely love to hear about them um, because I'm always looking uh, for that new uh, cool art app uh, to you know better create create things. Um, so yeah, so hopefully hopefully this was helpful, enjoyable. Um, this is my first video in quite some time and uh, yeah, I hope to continue making more and more. Alright everyone, so take care, and I'll uh, talk to you next time. Alright, bye. Hey everyone, I'm back. I, I, I wanted to mention one last thing. Uh, I just wanted to show, uh, I realized after doing this whole 45 minute video or whatever long, however long it was, I didn't really show any proper art. So uh, let me show you some stuff. And let's see. Like I said, I mostly use uh, Clover Paint. Um, so again, as we look through here, you'll see that the, again, the user interface, the presentation is lacking. Um, <clears throat> this is not very, you know, pleasing to look at. Um, but anyways, uh, this is, uh, so some of the stuff, like what, what was so neat for me is that I could do, um, you know, some stuff that I, I, I've, Normally could only do in like uh, um, like Photoshop or on a on a tablet, you know. And I I, I just uh, was just really impressed with uh, you know what it allows me to to be able to do the level of precision and detail um, you know that I can get. And again, it's probably still not quite to the level of a um, of a you know say a Cintiq on a, you know using Photoshop or whatever, but uh, in terms of the UI, like being able to pinch, rotate, um, and it's so responsive, uh, being able to resize my brush without a keyboard, uh, it's just, uh, it's just a, a real joy to, uh, to use this app. Um, right, what else do I have? So this is one that actually started in Photoshop, and then I uh, I ended up tightening up some of the characters in uh, in Clover Paint. But uh, and again, this is, these were drawings I initially did on paper, um, as you can see. But then I kept coloring them uh, digitally. I believe this one was mostly done in Clover Paint. Um, I think this one was clover paint. This one's not done, but it started in clover clover paint. This guy, I think I did in Photoshop. And her, I started her in Photoshop and finished her in uh, clover paint. Let's see if I can go through my layers here.
I think this is, yeah, this is what I had in Photoshop. And then uh, this is what I, this is how I tightened everything up in, uh, in Clover Paint. So, again, it might not seem like much, but for me, like, the fact that I can get this level of uh, uh, delineation between, you know, um, one hue and get a smooth transition in some places and then get a sharp transition in others, um, the ability to control my edges, uh, you know, when painting is, is, is the biggest thing, like changing my brush size. Um, and getting that nice smooth uh, fall off, that smooth gradation in the places where I want it and keeping it sharp in the other places. So, so yeah, I think uh, Clover Paint, it just gets it right, you know, in, uh, in so many ways. So, yeah, it really feels like I'm using a Photoshop almost or a Cintiq when I'm painting. And I am using a Cintiq, obviously. <laughs> this is the Cintiq Hybrid. But uh, it, it feels, I don't feel like I'm missing out on the desktop experience um, at all. So yeah, if, you, if you're able to pick up a Cintiq Hybrid for like, uh, you know, if you can get, get a used one for like a thousand bucks, you know, American or in Canada, just looking at like maybe I don't know, 12, 13, 1400 bucks, I would definitely do it. I think it's really worth it. Um, you know, not to mention you got a pretty solid Android app. Uh, it's really good for games too. But uh, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of show you a little bit of art um, because uh, I need a thumbnail for my for my video here. <laughs> okay, so hopefully that was helpful and uh, and yeah, I will definitely have more videos coming soon. So this is all just really super quick stuff, just messing around. Um, with a pen tool. I think my daughter drew on this one. <laughs> So as you can see, if I want to do just more like regular, just straight drawing type stuff, I can definitely do that uh, in this program. But then once I want to color it, I can I can do that as well. Again, a bunch of these are just kind of like messing around, nothing serious or anything like that. Um, but uh, it's just kind of like fun to see. It's just fun to play. It's just fun to use, you know. Uh, the performance and the, the performance of the brushes is just so nice. And I, th it does also have a, a ruler tool, this app, but um, not quite as sophisticated as what you would get with um, uh, some of the other ones but yeah so that's clover paint um, again I just wanted to update you guys I have a video out there saying this is uh, the best Android app uh, for art and that was I would say maybe close to six months maybe more longer ago and uh, I think that's still the case today so yeah <clears throat> definitely check it out and uh yeah happy android art making okay take care guys